relationship with a guy and he goes to church often. Plays, prays for me and with me. I believe he loves God, but he still struggles with the desire of sexual sin. <coughs> I can also tell that he is going to church but not living out God's word. How can I get him to walk his, this Christian life out or is it not even possible to motivate him? It's not even possible. It's not even possible. There's only one man that, there's only, there's only one person that can save. There's only one person that can save and that's Jesus. Man, you can, see, you see, you, that's your poetry. Evangelistic dating. People think they can save folk. Do you know how much energy it takes to save somebody's life? How much energy it takes to get someone to think right? We can't do it. <clears throat> so what I, t what I would tell that person is, distance yourself immediately. Because if he's compromising God, he's gonna cause you to compromise God. If, he, if he's not willing to lead you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a relationship, that, that, that holds on to true convictions, he's going to compr make you compromise you and God's. That's why they, the Bible says, um, uh, don't be unequally yoked. And I used to for a long period of time thinking that, oh, it's going to hurt the weaker one. When you actually look at oxen, the weight of the first ox is pulling the weight of the weaker plus the carriage. So meaning it doesn't snap the weaker cow's neck, it snaps the strong one. That's why Christians keep getting their neck snapped because they're trying to pull on dead weight. You're supposed to be pulling living weight, weight that can walk with you, weight that can run with you, weight that can mount up with wings and fly with you. But you're not supposed to walk with something that's not even alive. Because if you drag it, you die in the process. So what we do is, I can save him. He don't want to be saved. She don't want to be saved, right? So if, if, if the person really wanted to be saved, they won't go to you first. They'll go to their knees first. Amen. They'll say, God, only you can save me from this. I can't trust her, him, or myself. I can only trust you. But if that man still wants to get in the, I mean, still wants to have sex, and this person still wants to do that with no consciousness, no conviction, that person might not even be saved. The church is probably more full of unsaved folks than saved. God don't care about signing your name on a line that says Christian. He says, has your heart been converted? Has your heart been circumcised? Has your heart been made new? If there's no remorse for your sins, then you haven't been saved from them. When I make a mistake, if I can say a white lie and I feel guilty as hell and I feel bad. I'm like, God, what did I do? Man, I'm sorry. Because I, I know what sin does. It separates. Do you know what it's like to preach without God's blessing? Do you know what it feels like to know that God has removed his hand? That scares me. I felt that before. I felt how to do it without anointing. See, people are good speakers, but they're not anointed speakers. When you're a good speaker, anybody can go to a class. You can go to Toastmasters and learn how to speak. You can go and make yourself eloquent. That's why Paul says, man, I don't come to you with eloquency of words and speech. I come to you with the power of God because the power of God is the only thing that can destroy yokes. Dope phrases, five Ps, without anointing of God ain't going to lift nobody out of hell. It has to be anointed. And that's why I tell people, man, it's God or nobody. If God ain't with me, I ain't with you. If you are keeping me away from God and keep me, listen, man, because that joker don't got a hell to put you in. That joke, I don't want to stand before God. First Corinthians talks about first and second. I forgot which one. It says that every man's work will be tested by fire. If you build with gold, precious stones, it will last. But if you build with hay and straw, even though your life be saved or your whole work will be burnt up. How many people is going to be bringing you hauls to heaven talking about, here's my work, Lord. Here's my life's work. This is what I've been doing. And God said, bring the torches. We're going to test this work. And when that work burns up, your soul is saved, but you're embarrassed. Knowing that I lived a life building the wrong thing. Listen, man, if it gets in between you and God and you and this money and you and success and you and your purpose, let that joker, let that girl go. Because when you keep wasting time, you can get a girl back, you can get a guy back, you can get money back, you can get a job back, but you can't get time back. Some of us been in situations for long and it's draining our time. Your time is your life. You know that, right? There's a certain amount of time. 
And I don't want to stand before God and God be like, 80 percent of your time was wasted. That's why I tell you right now, man, if that dude has caused you to compromise, leave him at his sins and you keep moving. But Josh, I'm going to be lonely. I've been with this person six years, two years, six months. What? God said, man, let that joker go because you're going to be in and out of that relationship anyway. I tell people, let it go and let God do the rest, man. Because if you hold on too long. Listen, I tell people, man, only two people can drive in a two-seater, right? So why would God let the one in if you got that seat occupied? If someone's still sitting there and you don't let that person go, then how can he bring somebody new in your life? A person who's committed to God ain't going to want to see his boo with somebody else. So what I'm saying is you, sometimes you just got to make space for the replacement. If you don't make space, how can God put it in? How can God put something new in your life if you got this dead weight with you? Let's answer that question.